Machiavelli and his cruel legacy. I'll be talking about who Machiavelli was and his influence that he had through his writings, and including his most famous work, The Prince. I'll also be talking about his view of religion, which is fairly unique, uh, especially compared to what we've looked at before, and kind of what is the term Machiavellian actually accurate to go and describe Machiavelli. So who was this dude, and why, why was he important? Well, setting up the context, the Medici family. The Medici family was the family that controlled Florence, and they basically were kicked out of the city of Florence. So there it is right there on the map. And Machiavelli rises up the ranks, and he's basically a civil servant. A civil servant is a government worker, just a fancy name for that. And he serves as a diplomat. That's like an ambassador. And he goes and represents Florence to all the other Italian city-states and other countries in Europe. His most famous, kind of the reason why we talk about him, is he's going to be known for being a political theorist. I mean, there's been a lot of civil servants at the time and ambassadors, but he's going to go and really set up a way to look at the world and a way to look at politics that is rebellious at the time, unique, and very influential uh, even till today. When the Medici returned back to Florence, all the old people associated with the, the government, the anti-Medici government, are <laughs> not in for a good time. So when the Medici returned to Florence, he very famously is tortured through the method of strappato, as pictured right here. That was also used a lot during the Inquisition by Isabel and Ferdinand. And then he is essentially kicked out of the city, banished to the countryside, and that is where he's going to do his greatest work, the written work of the prince. I'll let you pause here. You can read it. And this just kind of describes the lifestyle of Machiavelli. He kind of was a hermit living on his own in basically the middle of nowhere, and in order to go and uh, kind of feel grand again, he's a humanist to the max. He reads the works of the greats. So his friends are really the Greek and Roman writers. And within this context, this is where Machiavelli is going to write his work, The Prince. Okay, so moving on to The Prince, the book you got to know. Now, the book The Prince is actually dedicated to the, the Medici family, which is a bit ironic. But the reason why Machiavelli is doing that is he's trying to regain favor with the family. What The Prince is, is essentially a manual, how-to manual, of how to get power, how to acquire power, and then how to maintain it, how to go and hold on to political power. So it's known as a very kind of the type of a work that ignores morality. Morality is kind of put to, pushed to the side because Machiavelli essentially sees humans as corrupt and they're going to take advantage of you anyway, so you might as well kind of just live in the world that we live in. He's a, he's a very realistic type guy in the way he thinks about politics. And he conceives this notion of what he calls the new prince. And the new prince is the type of person that will take into account his advice, ideally one of these Medici rulers, and uh, be able to go and rule effectively. Famously in the book, he makes the distinction between love and fear. And I'll show you the, the quote on the next slide. He says something along the lines of this. You would ideally, if you're a political ruler, you want to be both feared and loved. There's benefits to both. But in the real world, the world that we live in, you can't have both. So you must make a choice. And if you make the choice, the choice is clear. you got to go fear. Uh, fear is more effective. You're going to get what you want done, etc. Also the term or the phrase, the ends justify the means, comes up as well, which kind of goes along these lines. What that really means is if you have an end, that's like your goal, and then your means is the way that you get to your goal. And justify means it goes and makes it correct. Or it kind of, uh, like I said, justifies it. So this is, the, this is what it means. Basically, if you go and achieve your goal, as long as you get your goal, it's okay. You know, it justifies your means to get the goal. So, uh, and, you know, you can ignore morality. Morality doesn't come into play there. So that's kind of one of the reasons that his works is gonna get, are going to get banned by the Catholic Church. And then also this just term today, Machiavellian. It's really a synonym for evil. And I don't want you to get the wrong impression of him. He wasn't an evil man. The term has almost been, become greater than the man himself. He himself had a lot of respect. If you read um, some of his other work, he had a lot of respect for the way that the ancient Roman government worked in the Republic be, uh, before the Empire. So even he uh, saw government possibly working in that manner. He just didn't see it in his particular time and place. But Machiavellian, you just kind of need to know that you'll hear that from time to time. It's known as a session, uh, uh, cruel unusual punishment, kind of sadistic type, type thinking. So here's the love and fear quote. 
It would be best to be both loved and feared, but since the two rarely come together, anyone he compelled to choose will find greater security in being feared than being loved. So you gotta go make that choice, and it's gonna have to be fear. Last part here. He's very, very anti-religious. He basically sees religion, including Christianity, the you know the religion in the area that he lives in, as, as stupid. He sees all religions as basically man-made constructs, something to make you feel, yourself feel better before you die. And he says, if you're going to be a political ruler, you have to understand the role of religion. And if people are going to buy into a religion, and if you want to maintain political power, you may have to either you know use it to your advantage. So maybe that involves pretending that you're religious if you're not. Um, going and using it to fear people. All these leaders right here, think about Romulus, Moses, Cyrus. These were all, according to Machiavelli, uh, political leaders who were also using religion to their advantage. So, like I said, he, if you are Machiavellian in the way that you're going to rule religiously, you're going to intimidate and use it. And he sees Christianity as the weakest. I mean, think about if you saw Jesus as a political leader, he was an awful political leader. He, he, when he didn't even challenge the Roman government, he was really challenged the Jewish authorities, and then the Roman government went in and, and executed him. So he sees, you know, their Christian model as, as utterly useless. So he's an atheist. He's a humanist to the max, a humanist that goes and ignores morality and, you know, that kind of Christian thought, you know, in contrast to Michelangelo, who's a Christian. So there's a good contrast between those two. Machiavelli, I can talk about him here, but to really appreciate him, you've got to read his work. And The Prince is surprisingly readable and surprisingly short. So uh, if you're kind of like intrigued by this, I definitely recommend taking a look at it. Really interesting. And you'll find that these ideas just, they're, they're, they stick to today. So just something to think about.